I came on at a period of time when foot patrol was a big part of what we did as cops. I'm going back over 45 years now. Well, we got highly motorized and we were reactive and moving from 911 call to 911 call. Foot patrol became something was pretty much limited to commercial corridors in many cities if they had foot patrol at all. I think if you talk to some of my colleagues at this level, I was the one who introduced the idea. And one of whom, Deputy Bethel, who will tell you, was very reluctant. I didn't think it was going to work. You know, uh, you know I knew Commissioner Ramsey was making that part of his strategy. I uh, had no experience other than putting my footbees in my business corridors, uh, actually immersing them in the neighborhood. I just didn't think it was the best strategy at the time. Now, the first time we did it, uh, we didn't have Temple involved in it. We just kind of put it out there and we did it. My sense was that foot patrol was an effective strategy, not just the feel-good strategy. But how do you really know? So the next year when we decided to do it, that's when we got Temple involved, to actually take a look at areas of the city, small areas of the city, where crime was occurring in open space. With a large class graduating from the police academy, we had the opportunity to conduct a citywide evaluation for the police department. We designed the Philadelphia Foot Patrol experiment as a randomized controlled field experiment. We used crime mapping techniques to identify the top 1% of violent crime intersections in the city. This map was provided to the police department, who drew small, concise footbeats around the main areas where they wanted to target. From these 120 areas, we randomly selected 60 to be the places where we would place the footbeats for the summer. And these aren't commercial corridors. I mean, these are little neighborhoods. These are places where we've got you know, drug trafficking, other types of disorder, just crime that occurs in public space. Could be theft from auto, what have you. The other 60, we didn't take away resources. We just didn't add any resources. So we responded to the crime like we always responded to the crime. yielded results that I never expected, even in my wildest dreams. After three months, violent crime was 23% lower in the foot patrol sites compared to the equivalent control locations. There was also a reduction in vehicle crime. The commanders, who initially were naysayers, some of whom wanted no parts of it, you started to see that change where, subsequent to that first year, and they saw the results, they, they started to see them on their own district-wide level and the impact that the footbeats had, particularly when we reduced them to manageable sizes, man, I got to tell you, it was a good feeling to see them clamoring for future footbeats and not wanting to give them up. out there on foot and you're walking and you're interacting and you see two people sitting on a porch and you're able to stop and actually have a conversation. When you see kids that uh, live in that neighborhood and you know the good kids from the ones that tend to get in trouble, you know who they are. These are relationships and connections that you just simply don't get when you're driving 40 miles an hour down the street. What I will find that many of my commanders will say when they get those foot beats, they really, really are prepared. Um, though they have some issues to catch up with because they have not been in the car, those are easy. Getting them in the car and running from job to job, man, that, that, that part's the easier part. But they've walked those blocks in some of the toughest neighborhoods, and they've got to know residents in those tough neighborhoods, and they start to realize, whoa, these are they're good people on these blocks. Once you partner with a university, 
it's one thing like the commissioner always says to, to believe that you're doing something effective. It's another thing when you research proves it and it makes you really feel good about not only your tactics but the fact that you're on the right track and that you're, you're developing something meaningful. Well I think evidence-based policing is really the future. I think it's, it makes sense and I think that now having partnerships with researchers and academics is really adding an entirely new dimension to policing. It was a collaboration from the very beginning. You know, it was everybody checked their egos at the door and we all wanted the same things. Um, and so I think it was probably one of the, one of the most, uh, uh, one of the best uh, projects I've been involved with uh, in my career.